Hey guys, it's JM. We're going to do a follow up on the Synology video where we used the Synology NAS as the harvester and it was pretty straightforward to set up with the Chia Docker. We're going to attempt today to actually run a full node on the Synology NAS. I have a DS918 and we're going to see if we can actually run the full node. So everybody knows the full node requirements are actually only a Raspberry Pi for the CPU, but you do need a dedicated SSD for the database. Um, I'm going to be using a copy of the 1.3 beta, which is in main, which is going to have the V2 database, which is a little bit smaller. Uh, regardless, you, you still need to put it on an SSD. So there's a problem on the Synology NAS. You know, either you take a SAT, cheap SATA SSD and you put it in one of your hard drive slots, but then you use up a whole slot for your SSD. Uh, but these cool things is this uh, my Synology uh, DS918 has two M.2 slots on the bottom. And so you can pop a cheap M.2 in there and use that as the database. Now, one of the problems is when you go into the Synology GUI, when you put an M.2 device, an NVMe drive in the, in the slot, it doesn't let you actually create a storage pool. And if you go try to create a storage pool, it says this drive does not meet the requirement. Uh, it only lets you set up these drives as a cache. So we're gonna see if there's a quick workaround that we can do by SSHing in and seeing if we can hack it to uh, be able to let us use that drive to store the database on. All right, so we're gonna to try to hack the M.2 on here to see if we can get it to show up in Synology Distation Manager to let us uh, install the database on it so we can just use it like a normal drive. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is uh, basically SSH in. So if you haven't done so, you can go to the control panel, you can type in SSH in the search and it will give you the option to enable SSH on 422, that's the default. And then you'll hit apply and then you'll just bring up a PowerShell or whatever terminal you like to use and SSH in using your name at password. So I, you know, for me it was sshjm at and then 192.168. You know, whatever my, my IP address of the, this station was. Or if you're on a network that will resolve the host name, you can use the, the host name you set it to, which in my case is DS918. Okay, so first thing we're gonna do is a pseudo NVMe list. We're gonna find our drive here. So it, it is showing up in the in the system. Um, that's good news. Uh, that's the first step. We the, the system is showing our NVMe drive. Now the next thing we're gonna do is do something called uh, uh, this Sino partition, which is basically going to make a new partition table. It says, please remember to MDDM and MKFS new partitions. Uh, so if now if we do the pseudo NVMe list, it's actually going to probably show our partitions, which is weird. Um, I don't know why the um, version that they have in here uses this. But uh, the next thing we're going to do is create a RAID volume. So if we do cat slash proc slash MD stat, you'll see we have an MD0, 1, 2, and 3. And these are just my actual RAIDs that I use for my home storage. and playing around with. So don't use one of those numbers, uh, but we're going to go do uh, sudo mdadm create uh, and slash dev slash md4. So make sure you pick a number that is not one of those. Uh, Ray level one, because we're going to do single drive. Ray device is one, and then we're going to force. We're going to do this on the partition three. Continue creating a ray. Uh, sure. Okay. So now that we have that done, we are going to sudo mkfs.ext4 slash dev slash md, what do we say, four? Okay. And we create a file system. So now it says we need to reboot uh, before the Synology will actually uh, register the, the drive for us to use. So we're gonna reboot it real quick. All right, we are back rebooted. I'm going to click on storage manager here and we'll find out if our, our drive is happy. So you can see here, you know, our still says cache device, not, not initialized, but now we have available pool right here detected. Uh, so we created a RAID 1 um, and so instead of JBOD, so it's gonna tell us to assemble it, which is fine. Um, let's see if this, is happy and likes us. Okay, great. So we have a storage pool one, which is, sorry, uh, <laughs> storage pool three is our new drive. This is our NVMe drive there that we, we stole. Optimizing file system. I don't know what it's doing here. Maybe an, an FS check. Uh, so now what we're gonna do is um, create a volume. Oh, nope, we already have volume on there. Uh, yeah, so we're good to go. 
So now we have to just go to control panel and shared folder, and we're gonna create a shared folder and we're gonna call this uh, NVMe, uh, what is it, the P31, something like that. It's a SK Hynix. Um, and we can run, um, let's see, there we go, volume three, AXT4, don't need the recycle bin, no encryption. That stuff's only available if you have ButterFS. Okay, and we're gonna give everybody read and write access, except Flex. All right, so now that our SSD is prepared with a file system on there so we can put the database on there, uh, we're gonna go download Docker. So if you go here into uh, Package Center and search for Docker, you will find Docker. Uh, I already have it installed, so if you click on the button there, I can launch the Docker. Uh, we're going to go to Registry and search for Chia, and you'll see Chia Network slash Chia Docker. That's the official Chia image. We're going to click on that. Um, you can download the latest, which is the latest released, and that's a production version, or we're gonna go to, go to main, which is the running the kind of beta latest and greatest. Uh, now generally wouldn't recommend this, but we're really close to 1.3 release, so the main is, is gonna be pretty stable. Uh, so we're gonna go select main, and this is going to use the V2 database, which is a lot uh, smaller size, and that's going to help us out with this. So it's going to download this image over here. It's going to be, I think, a couple hundred megabytes. So it'll just, um, you know, take a few seconds here. All right. Now that it is downloaded, we're going to double click it. We're going to go to advanced settings. Uh, enable auto restart is fine. Uh, your volumes, you're going to want to add your mount to your plot. So if you have your hard drives on here, you'll find your add folder. You'll go, I just put a couple plots on there to test. So, uh, and then we're gonna mount it to slash plots. That's the default. Um, if you have more, more folders, we'll have to, um, you know, go into that. <laughs> it's kind of an additional setting where you have to separate them, I believe. Uh, you, you can just add them individually and then we'll have to manually add those to the harvester. Uh, and then we're gonna add a file. Uh, what I'm gonna do is, I have a, the keys, my mnemonic and a text file. This is not secure. Do not do this in your production system, but uh, we're gonna add it in here as uh, pass it through and I'll show you how to do that. Um, normally you would just go into the Docker and then delete the key and create your, um, and then add your mnemonic there. It's a little bit safer if you can um, launch a shell into the Docker. I'll show you guys how to do that. Uh, but for now, we'll just use it like that. Uh, and uh, the last thing we're gonna do is um, Basically, in, in we want to, on this new drive we had, and we'll, we want to go to, maybe I think File Station will let us do it. We'll go to this P31 and we'll create a folder called .chia. And this is where uh, everything's gonna live. Um, Cause we're gonna make this persistent so that if this gets nuked, we can see the database. We're actually gonna try to manually swap out the database uh, to see if it syncs faster. And cause I have my own copy of the database that's already fully synced. Uh, and so we're going to add a folder. We're going to go to that NVMe drive we set up and we're going to go to .chia and say select. And we're going to mount it to um, slash, you can do slash root slash chia or slash home dot chia. You just have to make sure it's the, the uh, you know, the same. So I'm going to do slash home slash dot chia. And okay, so that's apply there. Um, oops, go back to advanced settings and we're going to go to port settings. Those are fine. 8444 um, incoming and we are going to go to environment and this is the latest so we're going to chia root um, remember we changed it to slash home so and because it's going to mount basically the root of the folder to slash home dot chia which is going to be our nvme drive our keys we actually want to use the key file we we generated so it's keys let's say keys dot tech uh, in service, we're going to run the farmer plots that slash uh, plots. That's good. If you had a harvester, you could put in the farmer address and farmer port there. Testnet, no. Uh, you can put in your time zone here if you if you want to put in your real time zone. Um, and uh, I think that's it. Uh, these are farmer only and harvester only, I think. Uh, we're, we'll find out. So we're going to apply and we are um, just going to hit next and see if this, this runs. So if we now that it's running you'll if you click on the container button you'll actually see the container here and it says it is in the process of starting up when you double click on this now you'll see the full container you'll see the cpu and the ram 
Um, and what we're going to go do, you can see the processes are starting. It's going to run this SH script that starts Chia. It's going to start the Chia daemon. It's going to start the full node and the harvester and the wallet and all this, all this good stuff. And if you go into the log here, it's going to tell you. Uh, by default, it does um, warning log. I believe it doesn't do the uh, you know full info log, so you can change that as well if you if you want to. Um, and what we're going to do is go into the terminal, and what you can do is go create and it'll create a new terminal. And then now you can go into Chia and Wi-Fi. You can activate it and say, uh, you know, Chia show s will show us the blockchain status. Um, and it says searching for initial chain. Uh, Chia show C is going to show us our connections. Uh, and what, what's gonna happen here, once this kind of starts to create a database, I'm gonna cancel it. I'm gonna show you guys how to bootstrap it with your, if you have a database from another machine that you have downloaded already, then this is gonna be a fast way to get your Synology up and running. So it doesn't take you know days to sync, that would, that would be bad. All right, so it found the initial chain. If we do a Chia show S, it's going to show us uh, that the net space on day one was 116 PIB. Uh, so, you know, this is going to take a while to sync like this. So what we're going to do is Chia stop all dash D. Um, and if you just close the uh, container, that's probably fine too. I think it just shuts everything down. Um, so this, this is just going to gracefully kind of stop all the services. But um, what we're going to do is copy a, a, the database over and see if that works actually to <laughs> um, basically bootstrap this so we don't have to sync the entire database. So we're going to give this a sec. Okay, it stopped everything. We're going to close the terminals and we are going to turn the container off because you can't change the settings when the uh, container is on. So we're going to go to our file net station and we're going to go back to our drive. We're going to go to .chia and you should see now a folder called mainnet and you're going to see the DB and you're going to see this file that has started to create this 3.5 megabytes. We are going to basically take the a fresh copy of the database and we're going to drag it into DB. And it's going to say move and replace because that's what we want. Now we have a 36 gigabyte database, which is the, a fully synced database. So now if we start this guy back up, um, we're going to find out if we are ready to start farming. So it's going to take a sec to start everything again. Of course, you can kind of check the processes over here to find out when everything's, everything's starting. Um, or just, you know, these aren't super beefy CPU, so it, uh, it takes a minute to have this get started. Uh, but so, you know, now once you're in, you know, if you were to add new drives, you know, and you added them in the, um, in the Docker over here, as far as mount points, you can kind of go, you can do a, you know, Chia plot show by, by default, it gives you just the slash plots. And if you wanted to add more drives, you could, uh, if you have one volume and has all your plots on it, then, then you're fine. Just mount it to slash plots. And you can do a chia plots add dash d you know for your other mount points and if you do uh, an ls you can see you know the plots folders here in the, in the root um, so what we're going to do is we're going to do a chia show s now and we're going to hope that it gives us a uh, fully synced blockchain or you know oh it's uh, still starting so i'm getting a little ahead of myself uh, we're, we're going to give it a sec Yay, okay, so our, our hack worked. Uh, if we do a Chia Show S, it will show that we are uh, almost fully synced now because we're using the database that was pretty fresh. Uh, if we do a Chia Show C, the real blockchain is, um, you can see, 1.64 million blocks and uh, 339. So this thing will be synced up here in a few minutes. And um, when we do a Chia Farm summary from here, you'll be able to see uh, that the harvester is, uh, should find our four plots. 
and it's sort of going to say we're farming. Um, now, if you wanted to change pool or do anything you need to do, anything you could do it right here in the GUI. Sorry, in the uh, command line uh, from the bash, uh, you know, from the, the GUI of the Synology. Um, so this is a pretty handy way. So if you just are at home and you have a Synology and you want to run the full farmer on it, and you don't have another system that you want to run uh, the GUI or anything on, then this is a nice, easy way to run the full farmer and copy the blockchain on the Synology NAS. So thanks.